Hey guys, tonight we're back in the 2023 Mazda CX-50. I drove this out in California at the launch and I've had it this week back in Michigan. I wanted to give you guys some final thoughts on what it's been like to live with. This is the top spec premium plus package, it's the turbo. As spec, this is 43 grand, but even for that price, this is a fantastic value in the market. Interior is really nice. Um, I think it looks fantastic. I love these wider hips, wider haunches. This car is painted in zircon sand metallic, kind of an interesting looking rugged off-roady color. And that's kind of what the CX-50 is going for. This is a little bit more of an adventure vehicle from Mazda. Think uh, Subaru Outback, but a lot sexier. Let's start in the back, check out the trunk space. So just a ton of room in the back of the CX-50. You even get a compact spare tire. You can easily fold down the rear seats with these two levers and just look at all that space. Absolutely amazing. This is lower, longer, and wider than the Mazda CX-5. And kind of the ideal packaging in my opinion. You get a ton of room in the back seat. And I've got to say, even for this test car's $43,000 sticker price, this is still a really nice interior. We get heated rear seats, panoramic sunroof with kind of a little bit of a crossbar in the middle. I'm sure that's for safety and structural rigidity, which is a good thing. Plenty of room to stretch out back here. A couple USB ports, rear climate control vents, nice looking armrest. Yeah, just an attractive looking interior. This interior has definitely grown on me a little bit since the launch. Um, I wasn't as crazy about some of the materials on the dash, especially the stitching, but I think this looks pretty good. And in the real world, um, it works. It's gonna wear well. We had a Mazda CX-30 for over a year, about 15,000 miles, and that was just a fantastic car. One thing I do like about Mazda is all their cars kind of feel about the same. They have the same switch gear, they have similar driving dynamics, and this CX-50, I think is one of the best cars Mazda is making these days. It is being produced in the United States in Huntsville, Alabama, alongside the Toyota Corolla Cross, though this and the Corolla Cross don't share any parts. Uh, they just share production processes. You still get the annoying seatbelt chime when you get in, but if you put your seatbelt on before starting up the vehicle, that's not as much of an issue. All right, let's walk you around this interior just really quickly. We now have a touch screen infotainment, so you can go into Apple CarPlay and use this as a touch screen, which I think is great. This is still one of my favorite infotainments in the auto industry. Uh, kind of taking some inspiration from BMW's iDrive. We've got a scroll wheel and then a few quick access buttons for music, navigation, home. This has a fantastic Bose premium audio system too. Definitely something I'd recommend. We have three different drive modes, sport, normal, off-road, and then when you hook up a trailer and want to tow with this, uh, a tow mode replaces the sport mode. All these modes work with G-vectoring control to kind of give you the ideal handling. Uh, the idea is that between each mode, the car should feel about the same, just with different situations and scenarios and surfaces. Lots of nice storage in the CX-50. Uh, decent amount of room on the door pockets. The only knock, and this is just a Mazda thing, their cup holders are a little bit awkwardly positioned. If you want to place a large water bottle in them, there's just this dashboard that's in the way. Nice volume and track selection controls. Lots of physical buttons for climate, which I really appreciate. We have heated, ventilated seats and a heated steering wheel. Um, pretty much the same switch gear that we see in a lot of other modern Mazdas. Uh, if you want to hear my full thoughts on the CX-50, I do have a full review. Uh, we walk you around that during the day, but overall, I think this is a really nice package. Okay, let's take this for a drive. One of my few complaints of the CX-50 is just that the steering's a little bit too heavy. Um, it feels just slightly unassisted, which is a bit strange. Partially, I think that is just the blocky nature of these 20 inch wheels and tires. The sidewalls are pretty thin. Um, they're heavier wheels. 
you know, I think on a normal 18 inch wheel, this would be a lot lighter of a steering rack and it would just kind of seem to flow a little bit smoother in low speed scenarios. So personally, I'm not a big fan of these 20s. They don't offer a lot of protection over rough roads or off-road scenarios. Uh, hit a pothole in them and you're kind of done for. Uh, but, you know, it does make the car look cool and a little bit better in my opinion. But uh, I don't know, I think some manufacturers have gone a little bit overboard with the big wheels on higher trim packages where they actually affect ride quality a little bit more than they should. And I think that's the case here. So if you're getting a CX-50, I would try to get a set of smaller wheels. I do really like this turbocharged 2.5 liter. Makes 227 horsepower on 87 octane, 250 horsepower on 93, over 300 pound-feet of torque. Makes a pretty decent sound too. And here at sea level in Michigan, pulls great. Plenty of power. Really nice bright headlights too. These are super impressive. see how it handles here. We're not even in sport mode. The CX-50 has a really nice wide stance and feel to it and that really translates to the driving experience. For crossover this just feels so planted and so stable around corners. Yeah you can switch it into sport mode if you're doing some back road driving or spirited driving it'll change the transmission programming it'll kind of make your turn in a little bit sharper a little bit smoother with g-vectoring control get a little bit more weight over that front axle on turn in just by letting off the throttle a tad we have paddle shifters the six-speed automatic does pretty much everything you want it to really nice transmission Again, I think Mazda has a really great winning formula here, and they've kind of given the CX-50 the best bits and improved upon some things in their other models. This is a pretty dark section of road coming up here. Let's test out headlight performance. Once you get going, the steering feels pretty nice. Brake pedal has a really great, firm, positive feel to it. A lot of confidence in the brakes. That is one thing where our CX-30 fell a little bit short was I just didn't like the brake feel. There wasn't enough initial bite, and the brakes just felt a little bit uh, weak. The CX-50 definitely fixes some of those issues. Show you what this looks like in a little bit better lit parking lot too. All right, guys. So just a few more thoughts on the Mazda CX-50. Lot of highs here. Pretty much my only complaints are 20-inch wheels don't ride as well as they could on a set of 19s or 18s. Um, steering's a little bit too heavy. But I think that's also partially the wheel choice here. That blocky sidewall uh, kind of makes it a little bit difficult to steer at lower speeds. The CX-50 actually has pretty good steering, and so I think that feedback that you're getting is definitely partially uh, influenced by the wheel size. So anyway, otherwise, pretty great car. Uh, one of my top choices, very easily recommendable. Um, Zircon sand is definitely one of the more interesting colors. I'd probably swing for something a little bit more traditional, but it does look cool and definitely shows off the lines of this new CX-50.